hi everyone, we're here at Coney Island Lake Bark Park in the doghouse and we are again starting back on our breeds and giving you information about various breeds that are available for you as a possible dog owner. And today I have a breed that I'm not that familiar with, I've seen them, but we're going to tell you a lot of information as to how you can get involved and possibly end up with a greyhound. And with me I have, first of all, Darlene, tell us about who you have with you and a little bit about that dog and a little bit about yourself. Okay, this is Gunner and he is a right, uh, retired racer. He was born in Florida and he raced in Florida. He didn't do real well on the track. So uh, when dogs don't do as well on the track, we're lucky enough that they go into adoption earlier. So we got him when he was four and a half. Real quick, I've interrupted. Did they all end up getting adopted, or when they don't do well, do some of them get put down? Some do. It's, there's very few that actually do. Most go to a retirement home or a retirement home oh, uh, to I like adoption, I like or, or they are kept for breeding. If they are a good racer, they will yeah. be kept to be bred um, to continue the line. Okay. And now you're next. Tell us about who you have with okay, you. Okay. This is Jester. He's my old guy. He's 12. That's why he's kind of panting a little bit here. Um, he was a very good racer. Uh, his racing name was Gable's Mad Dog Sam. So, he's definitely not a mad dog. No. <laughs> um, this is Trigger. He'll be seven here in October. Um, his racing name was WW's Hair Trigger. So, sometimes we keep part of the racing name, sometimes we don't. Uh, Trigger was an okay racer. He actually retired because he broke his leg. So, they, the uh, track took very good care of him, had it repaired, and then they uh, put him up for adoption. So, how do they train a Greyhound to be a racer? They actually start when they're very small puppies. They're in long uh, kennels, or runs, I should say, mm -hmm. kind of like the chain link fence uh, out here at the bark park. Mm -hmm. And they just have litters right next to each other, and they just kind of start chasing each other up and down the fences. And then when they hit about uh, a year, 18 months, then they'll actually go to formal training where they use, and everybody thinks it's a live rabbit, it's not. Usually it's just a, like a big stuffy, and mm -hmm. they have a thing called a squawker that makes the noise of like a, an injured animal, and it just, incites that uh, chasing and then they just, they just chase that and run back and forth. Well, Darlene, let's start with you. How many greyhounds have you been in? Why do you like this breed? Uh, this is my third one. Okay. Uh, our first one we adopted in 2003. Always had dogs. Mm -hmm. And my first ones when, we first, when I was first married were Old English. And after a while, we, my husband decided we needed a break from them. And we happened to be in a meet and greet with uh, Grace A, and I just fell in love with the breed. They're just so loving, they're so sweet, and I got hooked. You're hooked. And I'm hooked. <laughs> okay, and who is your first name? Shirley. Shirley, and I'll, I'll, I'll probably get that wrong. But tell us again, tell us about how many uh, greyhounds you've been, why um, do you like the breed? I've had seven. Uh, I've lost three just to old age. Um, these, I have another one at home. Uh, she's a little girl. She's a little shy, so she, she doesn't like to be out and about too much. Um, I've always had dogs, mostly mixed breeds. Um, I saw a program on these guys and then happened to stumble across Gray Save at, I believe it was Waterford Heritage Days. And same thing with Darlene, just fell in love. Um, as you can see, they're very affectionate. They love to be with people. They like to be, have uh, someone touch them. Yes, constantly. yes. Um, they're very quiet, so if you're looking for a quiet, um, even apartment-sized dogs, people think because they're so big that they wouldn't be good, but, um, or that they're, because they're racers, so all they want to do is run, 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 run. But actually, they call these guys the 45 mile an hour couch potato, because a top racer can reach about 45 miles an hour, but when they're not racing, they're big couch potatoes. <laughs> Do they shed? A little bit. You can see they are. Um, it's that time of the year, but it's not like, you know, darling, to contest with a collie or an old English sheepdog where you're going to get the big handfuls of gobs of hair. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to get the little bit. They have a very thin, um, yeah. it's not a double coat, so it's not real thick. Right. So it's not bad. Um, and they're very easy to take care of. Um, you know, brush them, you know, every couple of days or something, maybe more so, like I said, during shedding season, but. I had a greyhound out here once that belonged to the bark park, and I kind of remember the, the gentleman telling me that the dogs don't sit down a lot. Is that they, true? They don't sit down a lot, they can't. Um, because they have such big muscles back here for, for the racing, for racing. Um, it's, it's just uncomfortable for them, but they can sit, yeah. trigger sit, sit. 
Sit. We're going to try and see what happens. Sit. He says, I, my muscles are hurting today. <laughs> Sit. He said, you don't have a treat. That's not the problem. Well, that's not going to work then. <laughs> no. Like all dogs, no. the treats work best. Yes. No. And when it's not his idea, it's your idea. Well, it's not his idea, of course. <laughs> So tell me more about the breed, though. Uh, how many different colors do they come in? They come in just about any color possible. Really? Um, the, only, uh, the two colors that are actually pretty rare uh, would be the gray or the blue color. And like chocolate. a blue merle? Like a uh, they don't have a merle, but they do, they, they're they spotted. They can come okay. spotted. Um, but they're, you know, as you can see, Trigger is what they call red. Jester's maybe a little bit more fawn, a little bit lighter color. Uh, Gunner is um, brindle. His is actually called a dark brindle. Uh, you'll, sometimes you'll see the brindle where it's kind of the opposite, where it's more of the tan color as opposed to the dark. Um, but they come in these colors and white with spots. They come in, like I said, black. Any color <laughs> pretty really? much imaginable. Uh, like I said, the, the blue or the chocolate color is very rare in a greyhound. Now, why are his colors different back by his backside? Is that just him? Um, this, it's just him. He actually has a little bit of a bald butt. Um, you'll find that in greyhounds um, because in the racing kennel, they are in a, in a kennel, a crate. Uh, oh. a, a large size crate, but in a crate, most of the time, they are let out two or three times during the day. So they tend to rub on the back of the crate. Oh, or okay. they also use shredded paper as their bedding. So that just tends to rub the hair off. And a lot of them, you'll find, it just doesn't grow back once they get into retirement. When do they start racing? How old are they when they start they racing? They start racing at about 18 months. Um, they mm. legally have to retire at five. So, but most of them retire before then just because, you know, you always got puppies coming up that are, you know, faster and they're slowing down, so. Huh. Well, I'm, I'm interested. I asked you this whenever you first came in. So, there really is no such thing in this area as anyone who breeds greyhounds. Not that I know of. Um, All the breeders are then in the south, most of them, or? Um. And they are mostly breeders who breed them for racing. Right, yeah, okay. most are in the south or out west. Uh, Kansas is the big, uh, that's kind of like the home of the Greyhound. There's the Hall of Fame is out there. Texas is big, uh, that's where Jester was born, was Texas. Uh, there are, because the, there is racing in, in West Virginia, so there are farms in West Virginia. So yeah, and most Greyhounds that are bred are actually bred for racing. There are very few uh, that are bred for show dogs, and, you, and I can't even say that they're actually any bred for just pets, like a lab would be you know, bred as a pet. So. I'm not familiar, but like at Westminster or someplace like that where there's dog shows, do they actually show these guys? Mm -hmm. Oh, do they? Yes. How about that? I you believe the Greyhound won a couple of years ago. Really? I think it was three years ago. So, yeah. yeah. Darling, yeah. tell me about, I, what was the question I asked you about the collar? Because I was interested in the collar, why you had a wide collar on them, and then you told me the collar had to be something else. Okay, um, the collar is what we call a martingale, and because their necks are so thick and heavier, and they're, they have slender sleeve. <laughs> they do. That uh, with this collar, it tightens up. It, otherwise, a regular collar could easily slip over their head and get out of it, get loose. So you would wear a Martindale one? Yes. Mm -hmm. Almost always? Yes. You have, that's what you have on there. Yep. yep. And you have the wide collar. Why is that? Okay, just... I, it's just a, pers a personal preference. Okay. I, I just like the wide collars, and he's got like maybe, mm, seven or eight different ones. <laughs> oh, does he? And change colors and, uh, you know, uh, he has a Christmas one and a Halloween one. Does he have a set of clothing too? <laughs> <laughs> some people yeah. clothes. He does, he does have some coats that he wears. He has a raincoat and he has a summer coat and he has two winter coats. <laughs> So, yes, yeah, so, and booties, and booties. Okay, let's talk about how they do outside in the heat. Are they, are they good in the heat? Or does um, it seem to bother them? Um, if it's really hot, I mean, they don't mind going out, but it's not, you know, let's go and take them for a 10 mile run. Um, like any dog, they can, you know, get heat stress or, mm -hmm. you know, overheated. So, but they do fairly well. Uh, same thing in the winter, uh, one of the reasons one of them. Uh, they have coats as if they are going to be out for an extended period of time. You know if you're going to go out for a 20 minute walk, half an hour walk, they do have to have a coat because as you can see, they don't really have any body fat. No, they don't. Um, they so they don't have anything to keep them warm. And they have a very thin coat. They don't have a big fluffy, like I said, uh, old English sheepdog type coat mm -hmm. or a double coat that's going to keep them warm. 
So they need that extra protection. So we always say, if you need a coat when they're, you're outside, they need a coat. Yeah. So, what type of health issues do they have? Fair, really, they don't have any. Um, with being a working breed, if a, if a dog has that, let's say, a hip dysplasia, you're not going to breed that dog again. So right. a lot of that has been bred out. The only thing we can say is maybe bone cancer, only because they are an athlete, so they are working, so they're slightly more prone to bone cancer. But unfortunately, that's becoming more and more common in all breeds. It so um, even what, that we really can't say is you know breed specific, so to speak. Yeah. What about eyesight? Any issues with eyesight? Um, very few. Every once in a while, we'll have one that has panis, which is an eye issue. But what's it called? Panis. And what's it, that? It's kind of like the eye gets real red and dried out. Oh, okay. Um, but even that is few and far between. Uh, like I said, since they are a working breed, all of those. Um, you know, breed issues that some breeds have, have we would like to say bred out so that, like I said, they don't breed that line to continue it. So very few uh, have issues. Um, arthritis, again, might be slightly more, again, because being an athlete and a working breed, but all those things can be managed. Mm -hmm. So just like, you know, humans, you can, you know, be on glucosamine and that kind of thing. Right, so, right. Huh. Unbelievable. You're very, very nice guys here. <laughs> I've never been this close to a greyhound, I don't think. Yeah, they're very affectionate. Um, like I said, very, very quiet. They make, most of them travel really well, so they make great travel companions. Um, How they many do, children? Most of them are well, like any, any dog, any breed. Each one has its own individual personality, uh, but generally they, they do really well. Jester and Trigger actually go to the nursing home. They do visits at the nursing home. Well, of course, right now we don't because of COVID. Well, but well, Who are you involved with? Okay. Uh, we go out to Pleasant Ridge Manor out in Fairview. And you're with uh, what, the Alliance of Therapy Dogs? No, or? we just go out as Gray Safe. Oh, so, okay. All right. yep, they, they encourage that. So um, we take them out there. The residents love it. They I'm love sure. it. They I'm love sure. the attention. I'm they're, sure. they're, um, you know, they love yeah. the affection. So, huh. yeah. Is there anything that. Um, what about small animals? Are they good with small animals in the family? Let's say I have a small little <laughs> kitten. Uh, again, that, that depends on the dog. Um, Jester's type, no. He has a very high prey drive. Um, and unfortunately, he would wipe out anything small and fluffy. Would he go after a rabbit in my yard? Yes. Would he catch him? Yes. Uh, Would he we, destroy him? Uh, they, they don't destroy them. What they do is because what their training is, well, I shouldn't say their training, what they've been bred to do for millions and thousands of years is to catch it, kill it, and leave it. So they grab it, they shake it, it breaks shake their it. neck or yeah. their back, they drop it, and they move on. I have a Roddy, my older dog, so. that's 15, and he was a master at it. He would get that groundhog in one shake, that groundhog was dead. It was a broken yep. neck. Yeah, so that's how they would do it the same yep. way. Yeah. Yep, originally they were bred to hunt gazelle over in Egypt. Originally they were from yep. Egypt. Oh, are they originally uh, from Egypt? I didn't mm -hmm. know that. Yep. So, the even then, like you said, they were used to hunt, you know, big game. So that was their thing. They'd go out, maybe two or three, you know, they'd uh, get a deer, kill it, or gazelle, leave it, and it was up to the hunter to pick it up and do what they wanted with it. Huh. So, now, they also have the small greyhounds. Um, actually, they don't. Uh, there is the Whippet, which is in the same the family. Yeah, uh, but they're in the sighthound family. These are sighthounds. You also what does that have sighthounds. They hunt with their eyes. Uh, like a basset hound would be a scent hound, so he's going to smell to uh, find his prey. These guys hunt with sight. So um, even for these guys, one of our requirements is you know they have to be on a handheld leash or in a fence in the yard at all times because being a sight hound, it doesn't have to be an animal that can catch their attention. It can be a leaf blowing, it can be a, bla a bag you know, flying in the wind. Um, a small child. So they're going to chase it. And, and being a sighthound, they're so focused on what they're chasing, they're not paying attention to their surroundings. Hmm. So they can't always find their way home. Where a scent hound, he can you know, smell his way back home. These guys get so focused that you know, they're just gone. So it's not like last he came home. He's not right. Okay. He's gone. <laughs> and like you said, these guys, even these guys could probably still reach about 35 miles an hour. And they can reach that in three strides. <laughs> So they're up and gone. They can, <laughs> yeah. go, they can go up to 35, if they're really in racing that, within three strides. Within three strides, they're at top speed. Wow. Yep, and the, another cool thing about their stride is that two points in that stride, all four feet are off the ground. 
At one point, they're completely stretched out, and at one point, both all four legs are kind of crossed underneath their bellies. It's so, actually very, very cool. Well, their front <laughs> paws, whenever they're running, or this way, or they cross into like collar or some other. They group. actually kind of go together. It's okay. kind of like a gallop, yeah. almost like a horse. Okay. Um, so they're together. So, like I said, at one point, they're they're like almost like Superman, flying you know flat out, and then they come together, and like so, they kind of cross right under their bellies. <laughs> Darlene, tell me about how hard are they to train? Well, anyway, you just get to, you get this dog from Florida. Yeah. What's it come with? I mean, does it know anything? Is it ass broken? No, it doesn't know any. It doesn't know. It's not ass broken. Does, no, it does. Well, it's semi house broken. Okay. Um, as far as house breaking, um, it takes maybe two or three days as long as you work with the dog. And once they know where to go, it's not a problem. But they don't know stairs. They don't know windows. They really don't know doors. Can you eventually get them to go upstairs? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Um, what do you mean? They don't know windows? They yeah, never... Yeah, they don't know where a window is. Nope, they've always been in a kennel environment, so most kennels, you know, don't have windows. Yeah. Or if they do, they're up high enough that they're not looking out a window, so... But, uh, it, it's easy to... They're easy to train. You just gotta have the patience to work with them. Mm -hmm. um, well, you figure... Yeah. Sorry, you know what yeah, Go for it. They're on a racetrack all by themselves. They have to figure out how to get the inside track to get to the to the finish line the fastest. There isn't a jockey on here telling them what to do. So they're very intelligent dogs. Wow. So they never thought about that. Mm -hmm. Well, tell, tell me. Um, this is what they do best, right there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Tell me about Gracie. We should talk about Gracie because in our. Uh, Grace Abe of what, Erie? You're uh, Northwest Pennsylvania. Okay, then we'll talk about Grace Abe in general, but let's talk about Grace Abe in general. What is Grace okay. Abe in general? Uh, we arrange adoptions for uh, retired racers, anybody that's interested. We also do education. Um, we do school programs, and that's not focused, centered on the Greyhound. It's just, you know, how to be smart around an animals, animals, you know, pets, too. even wildlife, you know, stay away, don't touch. Um, so it's just a general education. Uh, just you know, to educate people on how to be safe around, you know, animals. Um, and like I said, our main focus obviously is to find homes for retired racers. So anyone that's interested, you know, they get a hold of us. Um, and then what do you do? So I call you on the phone tomorrow and I say, you know what, I'm really thinking about it. I know I'm a collie person and other dogs too, but I like to think about getting a greyhound. What's my next step? Well, well, we do two home visits. We come to your house. I call um, you first. You call me first, and we say, okay, um, we're going to do two home visits. So we're going to have you come to my house. Uh, let's say you, you don't have dogs. You've never had a dog in your life, or you've always had small dogs. Mm -hmm. So we ask you to come to our house so you can see what they're like in their own environment. You know, relax, laying on the couch, laying on the floor. <laughs> and then we come to your house for two purposes. One, again, so you can see what a big dog is like in your home, especially if you've never had one. Some people, it's a culture shock when you walk in and the dog is most level to the table or the countertop. Absolutely. <laughs> so, that's so you can see what they're like and also to help you out. Maybe you've got a loose door that, you know, you don't pay attention to. It's just always been there. Um, so we just, you know, if we see something, we'll point it out and say, hey, you might want to get that fixed because, you know, if he's, he's ready to get out the door and with a little push and he's gone, you don't want to lose your dog. Do they counter serve? Will they counter serve? Oh, yeah, they will. Okay. Generally, they're very good. Um, you know, again, just depends on the dog. Yeah, so. he, he does not counter surf in the house. But when we eat outside the outside table, he will come to serve. Glory, glory. Yeah, the outside environment is just a little different. Huh. Okay, so we've had the two visits. Now what happens? How do you find out if there's any available? Or are they available every minute of every day? Uh, pretty much. We before I should say before after you call us, we have you fill out an application. Let us know what you're looking for. Maybe you've always had a male. You want a male dog, or some people are color specific, or if you do have small dogs or mm -hmm. children. That is definitely something we have to take into consideration because, like I said, if I brought Dress Jester home to you and you have a little poodle, things are not going to work out no, so well. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> so, um, so we get that information from you. And then we work with the adoption kennel down at Wheeling, West Virginia. We'll call them up and say, hey, we've got an adopter that has a small dog, you know, what do you have available? What? I thought that most of them came from, oh, well, some do come from Wheeling, West Virginia. We work specifically with Wheeling. Oh, do you? Um, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. There are, obviously, there are tracks uh, across the country. There are some in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, there are some out West, Texas, uh, Arizona, uh, Iowa. Um, more and more are closing. Another but, question. Do they yes. move? 
dogs from one track to another like they do horses. Yes. So, mm -hmm. oh, but the leaders were born in Florida. Uh, well, Jester was born in Texas, so they can oh, be right. born in different places and race. But they move places. around like they do. Mm -hmm. Yep, they can move from track to track. Um, and again, each track is different. Uh, Wheeling is actually one of the top tracks. So let's say a track in Florida that isn't, you know, maybe as good, doesn't pay out as much, and you've got a dog that's doing superb, you're going to move him up to Wheeling. Okay, so you can move him around. Because it's a little bit faster track, maybe you can make more money. So, yep. Okay, so you call West Virginia and say, do you have a dog that's available? Yep, and they say, because they, they do testing, they do what they call cat testing, you know, they bring in a cat, see how the dog reacts. Um, so they know their dogs and they'll say, okay, we've got maybe one or two that fit. And they say, okay, well, let's, let's go with this one or we'll go down and, and look at uh, both dogs and say, okay, well, we, we've been to your house. Well, well, we think this one would do a little bit better. Let's say, for example, Trigger broke his leg when he, when he was racing. They had it fixed, but let's say you have a lot of stairs. Probably in the long run, he's going to get arthritis in that broken leg. Mm -hmm. So probably a lot of stairs for him probably isn't the best of ideas. So we'll take Jester instead. Let's say they were comparable. He, he didn't have a major injury like that, so he would probably be a better bet for you. So who goes down to get them? Do uh, one, of our, one of our volunteers will go down. Oh, I wouldn't go down. No, uh, we find uh, people, once they go in, they want every dog that's there. Or they fall in love with a dog that wouldn't work. Let's say, again, oh, okay. you have that small little fluffy dog and you pick Jester. Well, that's not going to work. Well, how many dogs could be there? Uh, usually there's about 20. The kennel can, can hold 20. So at any point, probably 20 at most. Maybe a few more, depending on, um, you know, maybe they have a, a lot retired that week. So you go down, you mm -hmm. pick up the dog, yep. now what happens? Now we bring it back, we foster it in one of our homes for a minimum of two weeks. In that time frame, they are fully vetted, they're spayed or neutered, their teeth are cleaned, all their shots are brought up to date. And as Darlene mentioned, that's where they learn what windows are, what doors are, what stairs are, because as you can imagine, they're gonna learn better from another dog than they are from you. Sure. Are. So they're always fostered with another greyhound so they can learn from their buddy that, oh, hey, you know, these stairs things are kind of, you know, and they can watch them go up and down and then usually they figure it out pretty quick. And then they come to my house? Yep, and uh, within that two weeks, we ask you to come over and visit the dog as often as possible. We'll bring him to your house a couple of times so we can start getting used to, or I should say she, he or she. Here she. Um, and then, yep, he's all yours. Uh, we are always available for support if you ever have any questions, issues, um, you know, like I said, maybe, oh my gosh, you've never had a dog before and he's sleeping all the time. Well, for these guys, that's, that's typical. <laughs> that's what well, they now, do. Where's Grace Safe based out of? Um, we are technically based out of Erie. We don't have a physical location. Mm -hmm. We all kind of work from our homes. It's completely volunteer basis. None of us are paid. Um, we do have a board of directors, but like I said, none of us are paid. Um, it's just all volunteer. What's it cost me to get a Greyhound? Right now it's $250. Like I said, basically that just covers all the vet fees um, and, you know, the upkeep for them for that two weeks, the food and um, okay. transportation to go down to the track and pick them up. Are they big eaters? Not more than any large dog. They probably eat, you know, four or six cups a day. Um, obviously the males are a little bit larger, so they would eat more than the females. Today we do have all males. Um, a male can range from probably anywhere from like, you know, 70 to 90 pounds, even up to 100. If Do they ever get fat? They can, like any dog. These you don't aren't them. Uh, usually they're pretty good, um, unless, you know, you're going to start feeding them treats every, you know, five minutes. Uh, they usually keep their, their shape pretty well. Mm -hmm. They usually don't overeat, even if you leave out, you know, a bowl of food. Um, they kind of just eat to their full. And then... Do, um... Greyhounds can be taught to eat just at certain times when they're messing with greys. Um, mine eat twice a day, so they can be taught to eat, you know, at certain times of the day. Other people, you know, leave food out all day. They eat when, whenever they feel like it. Yeah, so. my, mine have always, my dogs have always eaten at a certain time. Yeah. yeah. What else do you want me to know about this? Oh, wait, oh, wait, you told me two, or $250, is that what yes. you said? Mm -hmm. Well, let's say that I don't want a greyhound, but I want to support your organization. How do I find you? Uh, we are on, we have a Facebook page, we have a website. I uh, can go out and, you know, send us a check, donate. Uh, we have PayPal, but uh, we can make arrangements. Um, and we're always looking for volunteers. So we actually had uh, an individual who re just recently got a dog after she's been volunteering with us for a couple of years. She had wanted a dog, but just wasn't ready yet. 
Um, so we're always looking for volunteers. We actually have a couple that um, just like to go to the nursing home, so they come with us. We have um, sometimes we have extra dogs, so they'll they'll go along. So with they us. handle one of the dogs. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. good. Okay, help them. Yep. What else do I need to know, Darlene? What am I forgetting to tell all these people that are going to be watching this? They're very affectionate. And my dogs are going to go crazy when I get home. Yeah, I've had my hands on all of them. They're just so sweet. Now, um, we talked about them being loving. Mm -hmm. And when Gunner goes for his walk, if somebody walks by and doesn't pay any attention to him, he will stop and turn around and stare at that person. <laughs> it's like, hey, look at me. I'm cute. Yes. But he's just very, and they're very trusted. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll see a car door open and he'll swing the new car door for a ride. Do you ever see mean ones? Every I mean, once in a blue moon. Does, but, yeah, yeah. And once in a blue moon in the 25 years we've yeah. been around. Unfortunately, there's only been twice that we've actually had to euthanize a dog just because there was just, he, you know, the wires were crossed wrong somewhere and he just, uh, he, I think they were both males, uh, not that that means they're all males, um, just couldn't be trusted. Yeah. And so, if somebody would have a greyhound who's listening to us and says, you know, I just can't take care of him anymore, should they put him in a shelter or should they call Grace? No, Aid? please call Grace. Aid. Not that shelters aren't great, um, but. There's, there's just some special things about greyhounds. Uh, like I said, you know, they have to be uh, in a fencing yard or on a leash. Um, they're just a softer dog, mm -hmm. so they just they just need some extra TLC. So we, we gladly take um, in dogs that if you cannot uh, take them anymore. Uh, we do ask that you reach out to the, your original adoption group if you got them from somewhere else, because a lot of times they do have a policy right. um, to return them back to that group. Um, but you know, we're willing to work with them if maybe they can't, or you know, you've moved from somewhere else. As long as we have an agreement with the original uh, adoption group, um, we're happy to take them or help you out. I tell a lot of people whenever they're talking about getting a dog, and we often talk about people getting a dog at a shelter, and I mm -hmm. always tell them, well, remember getting a dog at a shelter, and to some point getting them from you, you never know where that dog's coming from. Or I always say it's like a 747 and it has so much luggage and so yep. much baggage. Yep. Uh, but sometimes people do well if you like a certain breed. Um, you do well to go through the rescue organizations. Mm -hmm. I know I've had several callings from Western Pennsylvania calling rescue, and mm -hmm. I that was a good place to go too. Yeah. And uh, do you have pictures on your Facebook page or on your website that people can see dogs that would be available, or are they mostly pictures of your dogs? Uh, they would be our dogs because, like you said, uh, we kind of, <laughs> he's talking, uh, we specify what you need. Okay. Uh, so we don't bring dogs back from the track that we don't usually don't have homes for. Okay. Um, like I so said, sometimes we get a return because it didn't work out, or you know, if somebody moved into the area or once in a while, um, the track just, you know, they really need to move a dog, you know, maybe it's super nervous in the kennel or uh, just need some extra TLC, but yeah. I forgot to ask you, do they bark? They can, usually they don't. Uh, they're very quiet. A lot of times, uh, if you have another breed dog in the house, they'll pick it up from that dog, but they're still very quiet. Yeah. Hmm. The one thing I did, it was... Oh, let's talk about this. The a lot of times... Wait, 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 the dog oh, with, a, with a muzzle With a muzzle on. Yep. Okay. Um, people see the muzzle. muzzle. That's not a yes. gentle leader. Nope, this is a muzzle. Um, and so they'll think they're bean because they have basket, muscles. Basket yes, muscle. this is a basket muzzle. Uh, just slides right over. Um, Obviously, it has holes. They can drink. They can eat. They can play with toys. They do, um, and some people think they're mean because they see, you know, in racing pictures or videos that they have muzzles on. All of them have the. They all muzzle. have, and this okay. is this is a racing muzzle. You can see it's a little bit different than the basket muzzle. This is used more for a photo finish, so it's a little bit wider. Uh, so it's the white, so it shows up better. So they can tell which dog's nose crossed the finish line first. So, so they're, no, they're not mean, it's just, it, and it's for protection. Um, there was no hesitation with you putting that on that dog at no, all, because no. they're used to having them. Yep. We, have, we usually have parties a couple of times a year, picnics, um, or like I said, we have the three of them in the car, so they were muzzled just for safety. Right. Um, so they're used to it. Uh, the big safety reason is, like I said, they don't have very thick coat. They have a very thin skin, so a little nick can become a pretty big tear. 
And there isn't a lot, again, there's not a lot of fat there to pull together, to sew it together. So we always err on the side of caution if there's going to be more than, you know, a couple together. They're always like this on me. <laughs> he just wants pet, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, what's the life expectancy of a greyhound? Uh, about 12 to 14. Okay. Jester is, unfortunately, at the end there. He's about 12. Um, but I had one who lived almost 16. So mm -hmm. it just, you know, like any breed, it just depends on the dog. Uh, what about nails have to be groomed, but you have as usual? Yep. Do they no, have their no, new their They do have the new claws in the front. Okay. They don't have any in the back. Uh, sometimes they were moves, <laughs> uh, but most of them do have their new claws. So. Okay, last chance. What should people know? What's the last thought you want people to know? Last thought, these are amazing dogs. Um, they get a lot of bad press sometimes because of the racing, that they're abused, that they're not well taken care of. Um, and some of them, yes, that's just the way society is, unfortunately. But I could tell you probably 99% are so well taken care of while they're racing. It's crazy. And then there's uh, a little rotten whenever you Yes, get. and as a matter of fact, I know his trainer personally, and uh, we see them from time to time, and it, it is amazing when they see each other. Like I said, I have a little female at home who's very, very shy, especially with men. She sees, they have the same trainer. She sees him and it's literally like hearts just pop out wow. of her eyes. She's just in love with him. Um, they're so well taken care of. They're, they get treats. People don't, you know, think they're in a kennel. They don't get treats. They do. They, they even use like marshmallows and cookies. And so they're well, well taken care of when they're racing. Um, not only because the people love them, but if you're not going to take care of your dog, it's not going to race well for you. So I guess that, that's kind of a lost thought. They are well taken care of while they're racing. They are not abused. Um, some people, um, I don't know, you probably noticed it on Trigger. He's got a couple of little dings. That's more because he's just a big klutz. So probably he's playing and you know, with their skin a lot of times, it, the hair just doesn't yeah. grow back when they get a little ding or an ick, so. Darlene, did she forget anything? Did I forget that? No. Yeah. Yeah. Sure? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're not, people think, oh, he's a big dog and I have to walk him and, and do, and, and you don't. They, they don't you know, require the long walks like some dogs No, do. I mean, uh, you could walk, well, with Gunner, you could walk him for 10 minutes and he would be happy. Mm -hmm. Or you could walk him for a half hour and he'd be just as happy. And then he'd go and sleep for 12 or 13 hours. And if you like a dog that likes to stick to a routine, the Greyhound is for you. They love to stick to their routines. Yes. So. Well, thanks a lot. I really appreciate yes, really. it. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. Yes, you. it was fun uh, seeing these three and enjoying <laughs> them and, and having a chance to find out about Graysave. Uh, support Graysave if you can, even if you're not going to own a Greyhound. Maybe you could occasionally, mm -hmm. on certain times, since they are a nonprofit, 501c3, I'm sure. Yep. yep. Then you can certainly make uh, tax deductible donations to them also. Yes. So, again, thanks very much and thank you for watching, and we will see you again. Some, again. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, we're back now. We just finished. I hope you were watching our first program, which was on the Greyhounds, but now we have something an awful lot different than a Greyhound and a little, little bit uh, shorter in stature. We have a Corgi. And with me is Stephanie. Introduce yourself, please. I'm Stephanie. I work at the Connie Lake Veterinary Hospital. This is my three year old uh, Welsh Pembroke Corgi named Winnie. And tell me about Let's talk about corgis in general. We'll, we'll, see. well let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about Winnie first. Okay. Why, what is she like? Well, she's very energetic. She's sassy. Yeah, she's sassy. Yeah. <laughs> she's very friendly, but corgis are known for their um, high energy demeanor. So she goes and goes and goes, and uh, she's short, but she she's a big dog and a little dog body. Oh, yeah. is she? Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. So she's and, we're, Go ahead. And how many, no, how many different colors do they come in? Um, the Pembrokes, so they, she's a black-headed tri. Um, the tri color is the red, white, and the um, black, obviously. They also make a red-headed tri where her head would be brown or tan. They come in a sable. Um, Whoa, I'm confused. She's a black-headed tri, mm -hmm. and her body is black, and her head is black. Yes. Okay, what's my second choice? So the red-headed tri is, looks just like her, but the head is brown. But the, this is black? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. that's two. What's the next one? Yep, then there's a sable, and then there's like the red and white, um, and there's also a fawn. So 
The red What's the difference between the sable and the fawn? Are they awfully close in color? I, yeah, they're pretty close. Um, her litter mates, there were some sables in her litter, and then the rest were the black-headed tries. Um, I, a lot of people, when they see the corgis, they think of the red and whites. I feel like they're just more common. Um, but that's what, that's what I want. I, 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 I like the tries. Yeah, I do too. I really like yeah. the tries. I think they have a lot more yes. uh, of a personality mm -hmm. look to them because of their, mm -hmm. of their face. Yeah. Okay, so now, um, so she's a black-headed try, mm -hmm. and she's three years old, right? Yes. Okay, tell me about, everybody's going to ask now, tell me about this fact that one has a tail and one does not. Yes, yeah, so she's, like I said, a Welsh Pembroke Corgi. They also have the Cardigan Corgi. Um, the Pembrokes, their breed standard is to have their tail docked. So when Which is she, done right away. Right. Within typically three to five days, they dock the tails. Um, her ears were not cropped or anything. They're just big and stand up on their own like Are that. they ever cropped? No. No. Okay. Sometimes you'll see like a corgi whose ears just don't stand up. That happens, but not super often. Um, and yes, like I said, so her tail was docked when she was a baby. And then the cardigans, the other thing about them is they have a tail. They have a tail. Now, I'm going to always kid everybody with how I know the difference. I could never remember. <laughs> and I was telling Stephanie that someone told me that if they're a pen broke, right, mm -hmm. then their tail is broken off, so there's no <laughs> tail. If they're a cardigan, then they have the tail, like a cardigan sweater, has long sleeves. Yes. See, that's the only way I could ever remember. <laughs> I guess yeah. I'm sight oriented. Yeah. Something's not right with me anyways. Yeah. But, uh, okay, so tell me more about this corgi. What in heaven's name is her personality like? I feel like I'm the queen of England because there's a corgi here. <laughs> yes, she had exactly. corgis, correct? Yeah, she did. I think she did, might still. I think she still does. Yeah. But I think hers were the try. I always thought that hers she, were the brown ones. Yeah, I think she had red and whites, and then I think right. she had some sables. But, yeah, that's why she wears the purple harness. Purple is the color of royalty. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> I never thought about yeah. that. Okay, tell me about their personalities. Why would I want to, if I, I'm saying to you, and you work at Coney Lake Vet, mm -hmm. and I'm in there, and I just stopped in because I want to find out about dogs, and mm -hmm. I say, hey, does anybody in here have a, ever have a corgi? And you would mm -hmm. immediately raise your hand like you would at Coney Lake Vet, <laughs> yeah. and then you would start telling me why I should buy one. Well, she is the smartest dog I've ever had, so um, she... Just turn it around so everybody can sure. see her face. Cause that, Give me She's, she's hot. <laughs> so she is, yeah. So she was like, she, I've had a few dogs, obviously. I had a chocolate lab and I have a Rottweiler. Um, she really is super smart. She knows a lot of commands. I really had a very easy time house training her. Minimal accidents. I hmm. crate trained her in like a month. Um, Are they good watchdogs? She thinks she is. Oh. She barks at everything, which oh, is, is, is. She's a, the big dog yeah. and the small dog bark. <laughs> yeah. That's a typical trait from the breed. They like to bark. They like to bark. Her bark's a little high pitched. You can ask anybody that has to hear it. But she thinks she's tough. She guards the house. Um, so if I come to the house, she's gonna bark. Oh yeah. You have a Rottweiler too? Yes. And does she bark as much as a Rottweiler? Oh yeah. More. <laughs> yeah. The Rottweiler. He's just a. He's just a big. How old is he? He's um. He's he's seven. Oh okay. So when we go on walks and stuff, she's the one who's trotting around all huffy and puffy barking at people and the Rottweiler's just plodding along. <laughs> she's very sweet, but she she thinks she's a tough dog. If she barks, <laughs> if I come in the house, is she gonna bark at me? Yes. Yep. Is she going to make up with me? Oh yes, she's very friendly. She loves everybody, but she will bark. She'll bark for a while until you acknowledge her and then you say hello, give her a pet, and then she's fine. <laughs> okay, but she's not gonna bite me, is she? No. Nope. nope. Or do they ever have aggressive behaviors? They are a herding breed, so, oh, okay. yeah, so a lot of people, you know, that's her whole thing is she's a, a sheep cattle herder, so a lot of times, she is friendly with children, she's not around children a whole lot, um, but sometimes the trait, like if the kids run or they're playing, sometimes they'll like nip at their heels, um, just like an instinct, but she doesn't do that, she's pretty, pretty friendly with everybody. She has not been anyone yet, knock on wood, so. <laughs> well, you know what, she's so, I mean, she's darling. I mean, yeah. she really is. And we've talked about this before. Um, I don't know whether the owners of Samson are watching, but Samson yeah. comes here to the bark park, and <laughs> sometimes he's by himself yeah. when he's here. And I love when he's here because I play with him the whole yeah, time. Yeah, he's a handsome boy. Lovely, lovely personality, and he's a... Red, he's a red and white, and he red actually red. came from the same place that we came from, I'm pretty not sure. Not the same litter, though. Not the same litter, same breeder, though. 
<laughs> and who, uh, where are they bred around here? So she came from a lady named Dawn in Conneautville, which really just worked out that she was close because um, I did a lot of research mm -hmm. before I picked a breeder and, you know, picked a puppy that I wanted. Um, she had been breeding for quite a while. I don't know so much if she does it anymore. She's kind of retired out of it. But um, she did a really good job. She, you know, I was on a waiting list for quite a while for her, actually. We and, talked about mm -hmm. that because I was asking you, and you said you had finally heard there were a puppy was going to be born. I said, how soon? Yeah. You gave me, oh, the puppies are going to be here in three or four weeks. I said, oh, my God, it's yeah. going to be three months or four months till you get the dog. I waited over a year for her to be born. Did you? Yeah. Actually, three years ago today was the day I went out and picked her out, actually. So <laughs> that was the first day I met her. Um, but she she was a really she's a really good breeder. She actually you have to get approved to buy a dog from her. She was tested um, for the DM gene, which is a health issue. Whoa, 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 whoa stop. D D M <laughs> degenerative myelopathy. D um, D M G you said degenerative myelopathy. Okay, it's a D M. D um, it's like a degenerative disease in the back end that they are known for getting that causes paralysis, um, usually later on in life. I've seen them in wheelchairs. Yeah. Where they're connected the mm -hmm. rear end. I've seen them with dachshunds too. Yes. And they yeah. connect the rear end to mm -hmm. a wheelchair and then they have a good life, but their back end, mm -hmm. they're not, nothing from the back end. Yeah. Right? So that's a common thing with them. Um, she was text tested clear for that gene. So um, that was a big selling point for me. Uh, is she, that hereditary or does that happen also because of how they live? It's hereditary. It's a it's genetic hereditary. issue. Okay. So. Um, she, like I said, she was tested clear for that. Um, hip dysplasia is also like an issue that they're prone to getting. Um, really? This little thing can get hip dysplasia? Mm -hmm. Yep. She uh, has like a, they, you know, they can get that as well. Um, her hips luckily look good. <laughs> and, and if um, not, she'll be x-rayed at Connie like that. Exactly. She That's the way that works. Exactly. <laughs> Huh. They take care of her well there. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> Tell me some more about it. What are, what are the um, health issues? Well, you said the hips, and you yeah. also said this the What's it called again? Degenerative myelopathy. Degenerative People myelopathy. usually call it DM. Um, corgis get it. German Shepherds are also like a bigger breed that will get it. Um, and they're fine in the front. They just can't walk in the back. So uh, I didn't want to have to deal with that later on in life because uh, it's pretty sad to see. Um, she also, they're prone to back issues just because she's like a long dog with short little legs, which is why I walk her on a harness all the time. She does not even have a collar because I don't want people to hook the leash to her collar. Why? Because of why? Yeah. So the Wait, harness... Why, why do we, why, mm -hmm. I, I missed that. Why yeah. do we want a collar and we use a harness? Yeah. So the harness will help distribute like the pressure across her back when we're walking as opposed to the collar where a lot of pressure is just on her neck, which can cause issues down her back. A lot of dogs that are long like this, um, mm -hmm. they try and avoid them jumping up and yes. down off the bed and off the couch. Yes. The chairs true. because they can get hurt very easily. Mm -hmm. She's not allowed to jump any higher than the couch. And that's actually like a point that the breeder told me as well, mm -hmm. that they should never jump higher than that. So she gets lifted up and down off the bed morning and night. Oh, my Like Lord. a little princess. Like a princess. And like then a queen. she also, if she's riding in the car, she will wait to be lifted up and lifted down. She'll jump up and down like off of like a, a low chair or a couch, but she knows she's not allowed to jump higher than that. So, and um, I really try to do exercises and things that aren't super strenuous on her back. We go for a lot of walks with, our, yeah, a walk. <laughs> um, we go for a lot of walks with our friend Anna and her dog Rosie, who also works at uh, Kind Lake Vet. What kind of dog is Rosie? She's a beagle, who also oh, uh, okay. is prone to back issues. So she yes. has the same harness as Winnie. And we walk miles, and is, they just keep going. <laughs> is Rosie's harness purple? Hers is orange. <laughs> oh, okay, because this is royal, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, Rosie's, I, Rosie's I think, just orange. I think these corgis are darling. I, I've become very, very fond of them, and I'm, yeah. I think Samson is the one that started me on it because... He's a handsome boy. As I said, he was here with me, and one, it must have been two or three nights that he was the only one with me, and I would let him run all over the place. Mm -hmm. And he was just darling. In fact, I think there's probably right now a picture of my phone of him. Yeah, I see him on your Facebook all the time. He's yeah, a handsome I, boy. I, I put him on Facebook. <laughs> I do. Uh, tell me more about these corgis. So uh, they're really a, a nice breed to have that. Are they expensive? Yeah. Tell, tell me your range. Yeah. Um, I would say, like, I also Give me kind a of pay for what you get. Right. So I've seen them go for as much as, like, 3000 Have you really? That's not what I paid for her. Mm -hmm. But, um... 
you know, if you kind of like, if you're getting one for a lower price, I'd be a little concerned that it might not be a super reputable breeder. Right. Um, but I would say like maybe like 15 to two is like an average price. I feel like they're also getting more popular now. So people are kind of raising up the prices a little bit. Most people, when I first got her a few years ago, didn't even know what she was. They thought she was just like a mix dog. But now I think they're getting a little more popular in movies and things. So a lot of... Did they mix any of these guys with anything else? Or do they have any of these designer breeds using a corgi? I don't know of any. I can see that. Sometimes people will mix a Pembroke and a Cardigan and get like a merle color. Okay. But um, I don't... With a, yeah, with a tail sure. that's... Yeah. <laughs> I think they dock the tail on those. I'm not, I'm not really sure about that. But... I've always wanted a Pembroke since I was like 10. So that was like my thing when I got my own place and stuff. I was Did they dock the tails at the veterinary offices? Is that what yeah. they do? Bring them all at one time? Mm -hmm. Whole litter puppies. And how old are they usually when they're docked? So tail docking has to happen between three to five days. Um, really? Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, she, I didn't see that happen. She went somewhere else, I believe, and had it done. But mm -hmm. she came the first time I saw her, her tail was already docked. So. Any issues with the ears? Well, actually, she has an infection right now. <laughs> she does. I'd take her to call yeah. like that. I actually did this morning. She had a little exam done. Um, yeah, you can see that it's a little red and there's yeah. some debris in there. But we're treating it. Um, what about their teeth? Are their teeth good or do you have to have them cleaned and all that? So, again? she does not need a teeth cleaning now. We brush our teeth. Oh, I you use, do? Yes, I use oh, wow. um, dog-safe toothpaste. It's chicken-flavored. She likes it a lot. And we use now, you actually take the toothbrush, put it in her mouth, and you brush do. her teeth. Why yeah. do you do that? Well, because I don't want to have to have a dental procedure done, and I want to I keep know, the tartar off her teeth. <laughs> um, so she loves you do that. She loves it. She loves the toothpaste. Did you start that when she was young? Mm -hmm. Yep. For you. So we brush her teeth, and she also Turn around gets, here when they want to see how cute yeah, honey. Her, her She's very... <laughs> back in. Okay. She just wants some petting. So she um, gets her teeth brushed. She also has um, some dental treats that she eats. Um, we use science diet or prescription diet TD, mm -hmm. um, as well as a so water additive okay. to help yes. take her tartar that's, off her that teeth. Was, that was very nice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's good. So you use the, the water stuff with the tartar mm -hmm. too, do you? Yep. Yep. She doesn't even know she's drinking it. And she only eats dry food um, yeah, to help too. break the tartar off. She's actually on a light diet because she was a little chubby, so we're working on some weight loss. That's another thing about corgis is they're prone to obesity. Oh, are they? Yes, they are. Um, so she eats... What's she weigh? Oh, I should have weighed her this morning. She, the last time I weighed her, I think she was like 24 pounds, which average weight is like 20 to 30 pounds for a female. Um, she and was a little spayed. overweight. Is she spayed? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, of course. And um, she weighed like 27 back in January. She put on some winter weight. So we went on a little bit of a diet. She lost three pounds right. on the light food. <laughs> she eats um, a lot of carrots and vegetables to substitute her diet. Why would somebody get rid of a corgi I really don't who know. got one? I mean, is there something that they do that people don't realize? I mean, what type can she, would she be good in an apartment? They need a lot of room to run. They're okay. a high energy breed. So yeah. she needs that room to run. I mean, I guess if you were lived in an apartment and you were going to commit to walking her quite a lot of like quite often during the day, that would be fine. But she's outside all day, and she runs. You have a fenced-in yard. We have a lot of we have land, so she's not fenced she in. She's also my shadow when we're outside, so she just does her own thing. Runs and runs. Mm -hmm. So they're pretty high energy. Um, Is she a hunter? She likes to think she is. Will she get something? <laughs> She'll try. Will she try to get a groundhog or something? She likes to hunt chipmunks and squirrels. <laughs> does she kill? Does she ever get them? If she does, she plays with it. So no. <laughs> plays with it and then she eventually it's dead it. or no, it's just she doesn't do one of those one. She shit. plays as a catch and release. She'll like grab oh, it, okay. let it run, grab it, and then I finally am like, that's enough. Yeah, because we have greyhounds in there. Yeah. They do what a lot of dogs do. They grab the, the animal. Small dogs mm -hmm. are very prone to having issues with greyhounds mm -hmm. because they see it as prey, and they'll catch something and then do that one shake and then break the neck. No, she does not have that she hunting doesn't have instinct. That. <laughs> no. Huh. She thinks she's tough. She thinks she's a hunter, but she's not. She, she likes to chase things. Okay, well, you have one other dog in the family. Would she be good with almost any dog? I think she's so. She gets good. along pretty well with other dogs. She barks, like I said, but she's very friendly. She um, has a next door neighbor that's a boxer. Um, she lives right across the road. She's actually my boyfriend's parents' dog, and they're best buddies. Oh, oh. Well, you do bark. Oh. Somebody out oh, there. She sees somebody. See, Somebody's that's after. what she does. Um, so they play all the time. Usually, like if they're trying to chase something outside, 
when he will go into those smaller areas that the boxer can't reach and they're just like right. a team. Right. But they're pretty high energy. Um, I think so. I don't really know much about people like rehoming them just because there's not so many in our area, but I guess I'd say like the most common thing would just be they're not what, ready for that kind why of energy. Did, why did you want one of these? I have wanted a corgi literally my whole life. <laughs> um, they're kind of, I have horses and they're kind of like a horse breed kind of thing. Um, I just think they're cute. I like short legged little animals. Can you stop barking, please? Well, there's somebody outside that's watching this. That's why <laughs> yeah, she's, she's having a little That's what she'll do. So. Well, I think we're good. Is there anything I should remember about you? What, what are the three things, whenever oh people are done watching this, that you hope they remember about corgis? Oh, boy. Um, that they're cute. They're cute. They're all <laughs> cute. Just to remember that if you're going to commit to a dog, it is a commitment. Um, so, you know, if you're going to get one, you should try and take care of it the best you can. Commit to good vet care. Uh, vaccines are important. Intestinal and, parasite, flea and tick prevention, Lyme disease is a huge problem in our area. And know about their breed. Mm -hmm. And know enjoy. what you're getting into. Because, you know, just if you think that um, maybe you don't want something that's super high energy, likes to go all day, kind of sassy, maybe get something else. My other thing was I didn't really want to get a dog that I had to groom. But she also has a big, heavy hair coat, so she sheds a lot. That's another thing a lot of people are used to. Groom. Don't I don't have to groom her. Okay. She did get a bath in preparation for this last night. All right. But she does not get groomed. I brush her quite often, and we have a lot of dog hair. Um, well, so she's darling. Yeah. But well, thanks very much. Yeah. I appreciate it. She was great. She was awesome. wanted to see who in heaven's name was out there trying to get Yeah, me. she's very busy. Winnie, can you come okay. over here? Okay. Thanks very much, Steph. Yeah, I appreciate you're welcome. it. Anytime. See you again. And again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy watching my dog and me.